Hi everyone and welcome back. So in today's video I'm going to be sharing five drawing ideas for lined paper and this video was requested by a couple of you several months back and you guys said that you'd like to see a drawing ideas video but this time instead of it being on a plain paper sketchbook but it, you'd like to see it on lined paper and I really enjoy colouring and drawing on lined paper so I thought it'd be fun to come up with some uh, drawings that really took advantage of the lines and so I thought that's what we do today and for supplies I've got a very inexpensive lime paper notebook this is I think it was a couple of dollars so the paper is very thin I've got a couple of colored pencils to sketch with a couple of fine liners and a few colored pencils to color with and I'm not going to be doing anything too complicated in terms of coloring on this paper just because the paper wouldn't be able to handle too much blending okay so now let's get into the different drawings now for the first one one. This is a colour and grey scale striped colouring technique and you can do this technique on plain paper as well. I first did it on plain paper but I realised that doing it on lime paper makes it a lot easier because the idea is that you, you draw out your drawing, you line it or if you don't want to line it you don't have to but I draw, I've sketched out my girl here and my the circles in the background and then I lined it and then I'm going to color it and alternate the colors between color and grayscale and it's going to kind of look like the image is sort of fading in and out, in, in color and then into black and white and then into color into black and white so if you look at an old black and white movie it's all sort of in loads of different grayscale it's a, a, a grayscale tone so that's sort of the idea behind this drawing and by using using the lines it's really easy to colour. So what I've done after I've lined it I've gone along the outside edge and I've put I've kind of gone every other line and I've just put a C down which stands for colour and that is that that's just to help me remember where the stripes go and so you so in every colour line you want to colour as you would normally do so I'm putting brown in the hair I'm putting a skin tone down I'm using blues for the headband and the circles and you just want to keep doing that and by marking down the colours it's actually very important to mark down the colours when you're doing this page because it's so easy to get it wrong and to accidentally put grey or colour and to miscount so doing that is really helpful and then you fill in the, all the other lines in between with greys and I even went in and did a little bit of shading and you can kind of carry the shadows through the different colours and it looks like she's she's coming in and out of grayscale and colour. It's definitely an unusual look to a piece but it is quite fun to do and yes you can just play around with some different colours and then and you could you could make the stripes thicker if you wanted. I kept each colour to one line but you could do a thick line of grey then a very thin line of colour or vice versa. You can kind of really play around with it and the stripes do make this colouring style easy and it's quite fun to do. So that's the first idea. And then for the second idea, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to sort of draw in between the lines. And the idea with this is that you draw something that is kind of half trapped beneath the lines. So it's kind of poking up over out of some of the lines, but it's hidden underneath some of the others. So what I started with here was I drew out my sketch of the flower. And then uh, over on the right hand side of the page, I've sort of just marked off the lines that the flower is going to show and then I'm just lining the flower on those lines so you get this effect that it, the, so it looks as if the flower is lying on the page and someone has gone and taped over it um, you could you could do lots of different things with this this style of drawing this technique you could draw I've seen some people actually um, I think on Pinterest drawing little animals sort of hanging over the line over the lines like that but you could draw any sort of um, animal or, or plant or whatever you want in a sort of half in between the lines and it's quite fun to do and it has this kind of fun effect that looks like the flower is half under some of the lines and over some of the lines it's just sort of a fun little doodle you can do on the line paper and it takes advantage of the lines now this third page here is to do a patchwork layout and again I'm trying to take advantage of the fact that the lines are there in all of these drawings so for this one I'm sort of using the lines as a grid and this layout would also work 
very well on a squared paper. Maybe that would be another video if you guys would like that. I could do a video on drawing ideas for squared paper notebooks. But anyway, what you want to do is you want to create your, a patchwork of squares, rectangles. Some of them could be large, several lines tall. Some could fit into just one line. And just to make like a patch, it's like making a patchwork quilt or um, just a load of different blocks. And then you can go in and pattern inside of them. And if you've watched any of my uh, sketchbook videos, you'll know that I in, I include quite a few of these sort of uh, doodling inside shape type of drawings. It's just one of the it's one of the things I particularly enjoy doing in my own sketchbooks. So I often include them in the videos, and it's nice to sort of practice and play around with different colours and different patterns. And you can really use the lines as a grid. So if so, this is one of the reasons why. I particularly like drawing thumbnails on lined paper just because I can take advantage of the lines to grid up my rectangles to illustrate my pages. And I think if you were planning out something like a, a comic or anything that you wanted to grid up, it's quite fun to do the planning stage on lined paper just so that you don't have to draw out a grid, you can quite easily create one. And I'm just sort of alternating some different colours and I've created some circles, some hearts, some stripes, nothing too fancy or too complicated. But it's it's just a fun patchwork page in my notebook. So for this next page, what we're going to do, this page is, is called Hidden Worlds. And the idea with this is that you draw, you, you draw tears in the paper. So it's as if there are worlds or different things going on inside the paper and that they're kind of peeking through the torn area of the paper. And I think I did something quite simplistic with, with my version, but I think if you had time, I was on quite a, t a tight timetable this week with doing this video and everything. Um, but I think if I had more time, uh, you could certainly go ahead or I could go ahead if I did this again and make it more complicated, make a little story going on. And um, it's just, it's quite an interesting concept of having, you have, because the, paper, the, the lines are already there on the paper, the lines tend to disappear once you colour pretty much and so you've got these worlds peeking through the paper and all I did was draw the outside of the, the paper and I drew some little sort of like the corners of the scrunched up torn edges of the paper and I'm just going in with some coloured pencils and colouring in the insides. I went with quite something quite simple for me, I did a, a girl's face, some butterflies so she's kind of looking out of her, her world into ours and then down in the bottom two panels I have a sort of a night sky and a and a daytime so it, you could really sort of experiment with telling a bit of a story with this layout and I then I went around with a grey pencil and added a little bit of a drop shadow or a little bit of shading around the outside of the tears and I just kind of blended that in a little bit and then I took my white Posca paint pen and I, I went over the lines on the little uh, paper corners just because I felt that made it look a little bit more not realistic but I felt it just sort of helped the composition a little bit and if you have a white gel pen or a white paint pen you can always go over some of the lines if you need to take them out in order to make something pop on your piece and that's just another fun little page you can draw some hidden worlds inside your notebook now for this last page we're going to create some creative lettering and because the page has a grid to it, the lines, you can use the lines as a grid, it's really simple to do some hand lettering or to play around with making your own letters. So I just wrote the word Windy Iris, I used the lines as a grid, I, I drew the W much larger than all the other letters and then I kind of did all the other letters the same side, I, I, pull, I pulled the Y all the way down and then I just went over over those lines and I drew lots of little objects in them and you can have a lot of fun with this type of technique and you could draw your name, your names of your friends and just play around with creating your own types of letters and I used a combination of flowers and circles, hearts and then little squiggles to draw most of the letters and then I just did some block letters for the D and the R and the nice thing about this is you can you can really customise it however you want. Um, the, I would advise choosing little objects or elements that you're really comfortable with drawing. I draw a lot of flowers and hearts and circles and things so that was very comfortable for me but that's just again something fun that you can draw inside your notebook and yes yeah, so these are the five different pages we have the different colors 
and the peeking through the page we have the patchwork layout and all the all the pages here these are just drawing ideas if you're looking for some some of you guys did request this this video and these are some of the ideas that I've come up with I really hope you enjoyed this video and that you liked seeing these ideas if you try them out yourself make sure you tag me on social media if you end up posting any pictures and let me know which page you liked best in the comments down below I hope you're all having a wonderful summer everyone and I will see you again next time